Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Um, it's a lovely Friday. Uh, Friday is great because that's my study day. I get to learn more and more about dog training and dog behaviour, um, which is great. And I've brought myself up to my uh, office stroke wardrobe stroke gym um, bike in the background there. And I wanted to just do a very quick video on leaving our dogs at home alone. Obviously on lockdown, we are at home a lot more and we are, you know, our dogs are used to us being around, especially if we've, you know, we've got puppies and things like that. Um, I work from home. My partner at the moment works a lot from home, but he's in his studio quite sort of separate from the house. And I'm around the dogs pretty much 24 seven which is lovely. It's great. I love I love my dogs. I love being around them. But, you know, obviously I'm beginning to realise or I've realised that it won't be so great for them when, you know, I'm, you know, back out on the road or, you know, we're, we're away from home more often, sort of out and about shopping, going out for meals, things like that. So what I've done is I've brought myself away from the dogs. They're asleep at the moment. They're, we've just come back from a dog walk. So I, I'm, I take myself away for an hour or so just to get them used to, you know, being on their own and just, you know, relaxing on their own. Um, I have been discussing a lot about separation anxiety with people that I've met out and about, um, people with dogs, people with puppies. And we've been chatting about, you know, the fact that when people start going back to work, this could be a real problem. And I just wanted to give you a few little tips on how to get your dog used to you being away from the house um, for several hours at a time and how to go about that without causing too much distress or anxiety to your dog. Um, first things first, dogs really should only be left alone for a maximum of three or four hours. And I would never leave my dogs for longer than that without them having some kind of break. Now that doesn't mean I've got to come back to the house. What it means is that I need a, um, a, a support network around me. So a dog walker to come and walk the dogs or when, when the puppies were very young, I had, uh, luckily I had a neighbour who did it, but there were also services such as, you know, puppy play services where, um, someone will come in and, you know, let your dog go to the toilet because they need to pee or poop every few hours. And, you know, to spend a bit of time, like half an hour play and just, you know, uh, give them some company so that they're occupied, so that they're, you know, they, they relax, they have some fun and then they can be, you know, back in the house and back to sleep or, you know, relaxing. And uh, they're not left for longer than, than that time. Um I definitely would not recommend taking your dog out and leaving your dog in a car or anywhere where that dog is left alone in public. Um, you know, if you're if you're going out to work, if you can take your dog to the office, fantastic. You know, there's so many office dogs now and people that take their dogs to work. And I think that's brilliant. Um, but if that's not possible, I would highly recommend, you know, enlisting a really good uh, dog walker or someone you know who who is happy to come and and help out and um, give your dog a break halfway through the day at lunchtime or whatever um, also uh, with puppies and you know dogs what we what we don't want to do is make a massive fuss of the leaving process you know a lot of people think that they've got to give their dog lots of love and talk to them and say I won't be long you know I've, I'm gonna miss you and make this real fuss and make a real big deal about leaving the house because what that will do is is it ramps up your dog it makes them stressed out and it makes them worry oh my god is you know what is going on what is happening so when you're going to leave the house, what I would suggest is not to make any fuss whatsoever. Um, perhaps like 10, 15 minutes beforehand, you know, you can give your dog some, some, you know, some soft strokes, get them nice and relaxed, maybe get them on their bed and just give them some nice, gentle strokes and get them relaxed. And then, you know, do what you've got to do to leave. Um, my my dogs are, don't suffer dreadfully with separation anxiety because there's three of them and dizzy my, our oldest dog has never really suffered with that he's quite used to being on his own for sort of three four 
hours at a time um and he's never really kind of been destructive he's never displayed any behaviors he just kind of takes himself off to bed to be honest and goes to sleep and i think having him there with when we got the puppies they saw that behavior and they were kind of like oh we're we're okay we've got each other as company the older one seems fine so we're going to be fine so as much as they do pull those puppy dog eyes when you're leaving the house they don't really struggle desperately However, when they were puppies, I did notice and I did hear them, you know, crying and things like that um, a couple of minutes after we would leave. Now, what I did was I invested in a webcam just so that I could keep an eye on them when I was out and about so that, you know, I just wanted to make sure that they were fine. They weren't kind of stressed. And to be honest, nine times out of 10, they would just fall asleep. Um, what I did do was I would put on some classical music and I did this from when we first got the puppies, when they were relaxed, I would put, put on classical music um, so that they would associate the classical music with being nice and relaxed. So that when I left the house, I would put on the classical music and that would kind of remind them of being around me as well. So that's a really good tip to put some really soothing music on in the background to kind of keep your dog's company. Um, I would also, if you're going out late, I would also actually leave a light on um, so that the dog can, you know, see. <laughs> um, it, you know, even if it's one light in one room, I think leaving a dog in the darkness can be quite frightening for some dogs. So I always leave a little light on, whether it's a side light or even the light above the oven, just so that they can kind of find their way around and it's a comfort for them. Um, what I would also recommend doing is um, having something like a Kong filled with peanut butter. And before you leave the house, just put that Kong down with the peanut butter. Now, my dogs absolutely love peanut butter and this keeps them occupied while I'm leaving the house. And by the time I've left, they uh, by the time they're finished and I've left, they're kind of like, oh, oh, she's gone. OK, fine. And then they tend to go to sleep. What I would not do in this instance is leave any kind of chew that can break up and that could they could choke on, any kind of dry food or kibble, anything that they could potentially choke on. Um, because any feeding, obviously you need to be present. Um, but things like peanut butter, they're licking the peanut butter. That's not going to get stuck in their throats. It's not going to get stuck in their mouths. And it takes a while for them to consume it. What I would also talk about or th look at is... If your dog is a puppy or it's a rescue or it really does have some, um, you know, some se separation anxiety issues is to graduate the time that you leave them. So when you first start getting them used to you being away from the house, put your classical music on, you know, don't make a, a lot of fuss when you're leaving them. Put your little Kong down with the peanut butter, walk out of the house, make the same sounds that you would if you were leaving for two hours lock the door, you know, all of that stuff. But then just wait for two, three minutes. If you do have a webcam and you're watching it on your phone, then you can monitor the dog's behavior so that before the dog gets stressed and starts to whine or be upset, you can get back into the house. So that even if, the, so when you see the dog look up, you know, from, from the Kong, oh, what's going on? You can then go back into the house and don't make too much of a fuss, but just walk back into the house, walk in, kind of ignore the dog a bit and then, you know, do it again and and gradually lengthen the amount of time that you are away. So even if it means you're walking around the block, you've got your webcam on, you can, you know, monitor the dog. What I wouldn't worry too much about is if the dog is a, a little bit whiny, if it's a puppy, if it whines a little bit, nine times out of 10, they will go to sleep. Um, I I found that. So our dog, our puppies whined a little bit when we left. Um, Herbie especially, actually, he would kind of bark a little bit. Um, but they would very quickly just go to sleep. But it's monitoring your dog and how your dog behaves. They're not all the same. They're not. They're all unique in the way that they're going to respond and react to you leaving the house. Some dogs don't care. They're just like, oh, whatever. You know, it gives me a chance to have a sleep. Um, you know what to look out for is kind of reverting behavior so uh one of my one of my friends who we see um out and about with their dog um mentioned that the dog had started to poop in the house again after you know 6 years and and he was like I just don't understand it he's just started pooing in the house again and i then sort of said well have there been any changes 
in the environment to to your routine what's what's going on in the house and he said well nothing really you know my wife's gone back to work and da 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 and i i said well, well let me stop you there your wife has just gone back to work so that means that she is leaving the house for 8 hours at a time that's a big change <laughs> that you know your dog has just experienced you know it could be that the dog is reverting to kind of puppy like behavior and that's something to kind of look out for. But I hope that these tips have um, given you some some ideas on how to help your dog get used to you being away when you've got to go back to work or if, you know, you you, you want to socialise and start going out again after lockdown, you know, going for dinner and things like that, even if for sort of two, three hours at a time. Um, these are sort of methods that have worked for me. Um, they're very they're, they're well documented methods you know it's nothing it's nothing new um and it's just about getting your dog used to the fact that you know it's not a big deal when you leave and it's not a big deal when you come back when you come back into the house don't make a massive fuss don't feel guilty don't tell your dog that you know you're sorry that you went away because that creates this stress and further anxiety um what your dog wants to know is that yeah they've gone out for an hour they they'll be back and you know not making too much fuss when you leave and when you come in and then rewarding the dog when the dog is calm that will help your dog to be a more calm resilient animal when you leave the house so i hope that's helped um if you liked my video please do subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the little bell uh to get a notification every time i post a video for now have a super friday um i hope you have an amazing weekend whatever you're going to do and take care speak soon lots of love Mwah.